Good morning and welcome to um, the first of today's Tuesdays with CKLS. Today we have Anna Foote from Northeast Kansas Library System sharing with us um, transforming teens. The morning session is ages and stages of youth development. And then this afternoon we will have the facilitating engaging programs. I believe I got that title right. Um, but I wanna do a little housekeeping before we get started. If I have background noise coming from you, I will I will mute you, but feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question you. or you can ask your question in the chat. And if you wanna stay anonymous, you can um, send an anonymous message to myself, to Patty, to Christy, and we'll, and we'll ask it as a group. This is an interactive session today. So we're hoping that you guys will um, help us with that chat, keep the conversation going. Um, I wanted to remind you of some upcoming CKLS events. On April 30th, we have the uh, second quarter library directors meeting. It's actually the first of the year because last uh, January one got canceled because of a snow day. On May 4th, we have a public library services allotment workshop and it's talking about that new allotment that came with the system grant this year and talking about future planning for your library, how to put that money to best use for your library. And then of course on May 26th is our spring fling. It is our um, full system board meeting in the afternoon and in the morning, uh, Patty Gale and I will be doing our national um, ethics 101 workshop with you. And that will be interactive as well. We'll have some ethical, library ethical questions, uh, scenarios that are based on true experiences um, from Patty, myself or Gail and then we will split off the schools will go off and do a, a school specific library ethics question, uh, session and then we will do a group work library ethics session um, at 11 and then at 115 is our full system board meeting the full system board meeting is part of your standard you need to have a voting representative attend the meeting and vote in the interest of your library to meet that standard if you do not meet that standard there is a deduction of 10 percent of your um, base public library allotment. So make sure you get it because it's a big part of your grant. All right, um, Anna, I'm going to let you take it away. Great. Thank you. Um, I am happy to be here with you all today. Um, as Mary Beth uh, said, that this is part of the Transforming Teen Services uh, series, and we're doing ages and stages of youth development today. Um, this is part of a grant program that is funded by YALSA. That's the Young Adult Library Services Association, which is a division of ALA. Um, it's also sponsored by IMLS. Um, those are the folks at the federal level who um, send money uh, to libraries and museums, including any LSTA grants you may have received in the past. And that's part of how we fund uh, summer library program for all of our public libraries. And then it's also sponsored by COSLA, which is the Chief Officers of State Library Agencies, which is um, the Association of State Librarians, essentially. So. Um, Oops. Well, here we go. All right. Oops. Got ahead of myself. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about today and how it's different than maybe a traditional training that you go to. Um, as Mary Beth mentioned, we want this to be very interactive and that's because it's a facilitated session. Um, typically a lot of what we go to, I think in, in library land is a training or um, so it's more about, you know, just learning, um, from learning very specific things from someone who's at the front of the room or, or at the front of the camera in, in this case just talking and what i'm really going to do today is facilitate our learning so i'm going to help guide the interaction and we're going to learn together and um, my job is to just provide you with some resources and to lead the conversation so what we're going to do is is really look at um uh, and we'll get i guess actually let me move on to the agenda because that will help me oops sorry my my finger is really click happy this morning. Um, so what we're going to do today is introductions. We're going to do some learning agreements for our time together. Uh, we're going to talk about the outcomes that um, the grant wants us to kind of see from this um, from this our time together today. And so we will leave time at the end for you to complete an evaluation. So uh, please hang on and do that for us. That will help us ensure that we're able to continue to bring these trainings. And the evaluation is going to ask you specifically about the outcome. So while um, you are working on that, I will have the 
um, outcomes up on my screen, but we're going to go over those at the beginning so you can kind of be on the lookout for whether you're, uh, you know, experiencing those or not. Then we're going to do an activity called strolling through the years. And um, that's really a chance for us all to get back in touch with what it was like to be a preteen and then like a young teen in middle school and an older teen in high school. So we have an exercise that will work together on that. And um, then we're going to do uh, explore ages and stages. So getting into the way that young people develop um, from about age ten or eight um, through age 18 or so. And there, there's three different age groups there. Um, the, you do have a handout also called ages and stages that's very colorful. So when we get to that, um, I'll ask you to, there are, as I mentioned, the three age groups, I'll ask you to concentrate on one of those and, and really get kind of dig down into one. Maybe it's one you want to know more about, or it's the one you work with the most. It's totally up to you. Um, and then we'll go into those, those two, the strolling through the years and the ages and the stages are really the, the meat of this session or the, the main part of the session. And then we'll get into building your toolbox, which is we'll work together to identify some of the tools that we may have in our libraries that will help us to um, think about how we're going to serve teens moving forward with some of the new experience and knowledge that we gain today. And then we'll go into action planning, how to put those ideas into work. And then, as I mentioned, we'll give you a little bit of time for evaluation. Um, before I go any further, I did want to mention that the handouts are available. Patty, or I'm sorry, um, Mary Beth put them, put the um, the contents of her folder. So all of the, the handouts that we're talking about today are there. And um, after this session, you will be provided with a copy of these. Uh, I'm sending Mary Beth and then she'll post them. Uh, copies of the slides and all of the shared documents that we work on together today. So don't worry too much about um, capturing all of those. We'll uh, make sure that you have the slides and all of the documents that we work on together um, after this. And you also have access to the recording, of course. Told you, I'm really happy with this finger. Um, okay, so next I wanted to move into introductions. My name is Anna Foote. As um, has been mentioned, I'm Youth and School Services Consultant for Northeast Kansas Library System. Um, I'm also a book and learning nerd from way back, and I am also a former teen, and evidence for that is in these photos over here. Um, I had my best friend from high school send me these. I'm not very good at keeping photos, so um, over here on the far right upper corner is my friend Michelle. She's, she gets credit for these photos. So um, if you would please take a moment. Oh, um, if you would please take a moment to put your name, title, and a word or a phrase that describe you as a teen in the chat, we can get to, to know each other a little bit more. I know a lot of you know each other very well, and I know a few of you, but would love to hear about um, what described you as a teen? For me, it was probably the book and learning nerd. I just, I've always loved learning and that did not stop when I was a teenager or hasn't stopped yet. So I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and give you a minute or two to fill out the chat, please. Thanks, I'm seeing quite a few come through. I'm seeing things like nerd come through and social. There was a rebel in our amongst our midst, talkative, shy, quiet one. Just going to give it another few seconds for people who are still um, still typing. 
somebody sports lover, not a reader. Yeah. Oh, Don has prom going on this week. Yeah, it will be very busy. So uh, if you're still, yeah, great. Um, small group of friends, reader, drama club. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely had a small group of good friends too. And that actually kind of holds true for me as an adult. I have a, I mean, I, I, yeah. Um. <laughs> Cool, if you're typing, please do so. Um, thank you all for introducing yourselves and letting us know a little bit about what you were like as a teenager. And we, as I said, we're gonna explore that even more um, as we move forward. Ah. Okay, next I wanted to move into those learning community uh, agreements that I mentioned. In the interest of time, I made a few, I, su I suggest a few, but then we do have this empty spot where we can add any if you would like. So I'm gonna go through and, and just talk a little bit about what, um, what I mean by these agreements. And then if there's anybody who needs clarification or if there's anything you wanna add, we can certainly do that. You can put it in chat. Um, you can unmute yourself at any point during this. I'm very informal. So if you have questions or comments as we move along, something you want to say, just jump right in there um, and and either chat it. We've got people monitoring chat or actually unmute yourself and say it. So um, for our agreements today, and this is just so that we un, um, assure ourselves like a respectful environment for learning together, we ask that um, you be present and that you take care of your learning needs. So I kind of alluded to that just now saying, you know, if you have a question, ask a question. If, um, you know, you need to get up and stretch your legs, that helps you learn better, do that. Anything that you need to help take care of your learning needs. And then we ask that you be open to share, respect and learn from each other. And then um, considering intent versus impact. So that's just acknowledging the difference between intent and impact. Sometimes how we intend to say something may not be the way it impacts someone and uh, no, acknowledging that those two are different things and um, just understanding that. And then uh, the final one I wanted to propose, but it certainly doesn't have to be the final one is step up and step back. And that simply means um, if you realize you're kind of hanging back and you're not participating in chat, or maybe you haven't unmuted yourself to talk, uh, go ahead and step up and do that if you have something to say or a question to ask. And then by the same token, usually in the in online situation, this isn't quite as, as uh, pressing, but if you find that you are talking a lot, maybe step back just a little bit and let somebody else have a chance to talk. Um, a lot of times, you know, especially if we're using chat or these shared documents that we're going to do later in the, the um in the session, it doesn't really matter quite as much. Does anyone have an additional agreement or any comments on the, the proposed agreements? I'm gonna give it just a moment. Okay, if you are typing, please continue to do so, but um, I'm not seeing anything going on. Um, so what I would like for everyone to do is if you agree to these, please type yes in the chat and we'll give that just a, a minute for everybody to go ahead and type, type yes. Okay, I see that chat slowed down. I think that was almost everybody, if not everybody. Does anyone have any objections before we move on or any comments at all? Okay, great, we've got our agreements then, thank you. Okay, so as promised, here are some outcomes we're going to work towards today. And as I mentioned, um, I will have these up on my screen when you do your evaluation at the end. So the evaluation, among other things, is going to ask you if we met these outcomes. So what we're gonna do today, 
is, or what we're going to attempt to do today, I guess, is remember what it means to be a teenager and build empathy for the preteens and teens we serve. And we've kind of already started to do that with our introductions and those descriptive words or phrases. Uh, second is to identify the various ages and stages of youth development. And then third is develop tools to design developmentally appropriate activities and spaces for preteens and teens. Um, so I'm just want, if there are any questions, go ahead and let me know. Um, when we used to do this session in person, it was anywhere between two and a half to three hours. So this is obviously an abbreviated version of that for online environment, but I think we can still meet these outcomes. So, all right. Okay, so we're gonna move on to that first main activity, which is stroll through the years. And what I'm going to ask you to do is reflect back on yourself at fifth, eighth and 11th grades and um, think about these questions. And these will all be, we're going to go to a Padlet to reflect. So, um, and Christy's already put that in the chat. So there's a link to the Padlet. When you go over to that, all this information is going to be on there. So don't worry about, and, and I'm gonna go over there too. So it's all on the Padlet that you need. But um, so basically just think about yourself at fifth, eighth and 11th. And um, you don't have to answer every single question in every single age group, but just kind of think back about what it was like to be kind of a, you know, late preteen and early teen and a late teen. I'm gonna take us over to the Padlet also. And these should come out as anonymous. So feel free to be as honest as you want. I'm not gonna make anybody talk about what the responses are. I may ask a question about some of the responses, but um, feel free to, to be as open as you would like to be. It, it will be anonymous. So if I make a comment, you're gonna be able to see it. That's my little picture right there, but everybody else should be anonymous. So um, feel free to go ahead and start making comments and I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. Anna, this is Patty. Yes. Um, the Padlet technology hasn't been used a whole lot here at CKLS. So would you um, introduce some of our friends who might not be as comfortable with it? Um, sure, you should. Once you get it pulled up, just um, like here where I have an ad comment, um, just click in there, type. Um, and then you can hit return and it should just update for you. Um, very similar to making a uh, like a text or even using chat in, um, in, in Zoom. And if you're having trouble, let us know. Um, you, could, you could chat one of the CKLS staff um, if you would like. And I do see that things are coming across as anonymous except for mine, so that's perfect. Alice, I see your um, I see your chat there. I'm sorry about that. I'm not quite sure what's going on. If you feel comfortable putting 
your responses in the chat. You could just say fifth, eighth, or 11th in your comments. Or um, if you want to send those to CKLS, one of them could also put them into the Padlet for you. Looks like the Padlet has slowed down quite a bit. So I'm gonna to start to debrief it with you all a little bit, um, but if you are still making contributions, continue to do so. They'll land at the bottom so I can just come back um, as needed. So, um, so um, in strolling through the years, we're thinking about school and friends, caring adults, non-school activities, dreams and future plans. So um, I think this is kind of interesting. I noticed that there are more comments, like the fewest number of comments are for fifth grade and then second is eighth grade and the most comments are for 11th grade. I, I wonder if that's because we remember 11th grade better. I probably do. So anyway, just, just a, an observation there. Um, so fifth grade, I'm not going to read all of these because you will get a copy of this and you can read them as well, but just kind of pulling out some of the the points that maybe have to do with that certain age and how we felt at those ages. Um, beginning to be aware of boys. Yeah, I think that's something that varies a, a lot for, um, for individuals too. Like I was I was kind of slow with that. I, it took me around eighth grade before I began, began to be aware of boys in, in that way anyway. But anyway, um, somebody said very quiet and nervous starting middle school, seventh and eighth graders intimidating. Yes, for sure. Um, fifth grade girls started with the drama bullying. Yes, that's for sure. Um, good student and a love emerging uh, um, emerged around fifth grade. Uh, neighborhood was filled with kids and everyone's mother was your mother. It's cool. Mm, another bullying comment. Witnessed my siblings being bullied and worked hard not to be a target myself. Yeah. And somebody says, on top of the world. And then, oh, I like this too. Shy, socially unsure, figuring out what it really means to be a friend. Yeah, I think that's something when we move on to the ages and stages handout, that's something that's kind of called out there as well, that um, that's sort of the age that a lot of people start moving beyond their family being the most important thing. And they start thinking about friends and um, the larger world in, also. Um, so that's what we think about fifth grade and what we remember about fifth grade. How about eighth? Um, confident, somebody was loud, making social connection with peers, um, trying to fit in, awkward. And then somebody else wanting to fit in. Yeah, I think that's very eighth grade. Uh, clicks had started, had a smaller group of friends, boy, the boys and girls, both very social. I'm sorry, both boys and girls, very social. Um, Somebody had a difficult home life, learned more about into the world, social world of friends, school bonded with the friend's mom. Yeah, that's one of those cases where um, a positive interaction or positive relationship, excuse me, with caring adults can be super important. Um, somebody else in eighth grade, finding footing with peers, developing personality, um, still have friends I met in junior high. <laughs> Somebody mentions eighth grade. By eighth grade, I was ready to face the world. Then high school came. <laughs> and there is a there is a comment in the chat. Wonder if it mattered for social comfort where grade school ended and middle school started? Because of course, some you know fifth grade or sixth grade may still be in grade school, and you know fresh ninth grade may have been part of the junior high. So right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Like how that affects people. 
Um, and somebody else said in, in eighth grade, on top of the world. And then over here, we have an eighth grade, um, became aware of peers changing boys, but still love school and sports. Um, the whole village really did raise us. That's great. And I need to move some windows here to see my, let's see. Oh, 11th grade went down here. Okay, sorry. Um, here we go. So that was eighth grade. Um, and I didn't stop for comments. Any comments or questions um, on fifth grade or eighth grade? I don't see any new ones. Okay. Um, so 11th grade clicks, dislike school becoming more of a loner by my choice. Still didn't Still enjoy people just didn't trust them much. Yeah, let's see, what else about 11th grade high school? Um, finally felt comfortable and confident in who I was, felt like I had friends and finally fit in. Um, social, very social. Knew I wanted to be an elementary teacher, cool. Friends, boyfriends were my life. Luckily I was a good student. Um, A tight group of friends, not challenged in school, awkward, um, socially away from friends. Loved high school until my senior year. Um, very social and wanted to be independent, ready for college, smaller group of good, good friends. Uh, yeah, that wanting to be independent, we'll see that in the ages and stages document too about how that, that oldest age range that we're gonna talk about is really, really ready to move on. <laughs> um, wild child, very social, sarcastic, no fear. <laughs> Somebody says, didn't know I was the leader of my social group until it was pointed out to me. That's interesting. Um, active, lots of activities, people say. Um, great. Any um, any comments on maybe what somebody else said about 11th grade or any questions on those? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll comment. Um, yeah, thanks. I remembered that 11th grade was my first year that I was the only child at home. So mm. I felt like I could finally like branch out that way at home as well. So it was kind of nice to just be my parents and I for a little while. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I'm just the older of two daughters and my sister's three years younger than me. So I, I never thought about that as an experience that people would have, but absolutely. You kind of get get your time with your, your parents and explore that relationship more of a like one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. And it's funny you brought that out, Mary Beth, because this was the, my, um, junior year was the year my dad moved out and so it was um, then just me and my mom and those next three years my mother went through her second childhood and I listened to her more complain about boys than the other way and it was really weird how the friendship that we still have was cemented then because it was like she was 18 and it was it was really weird uh, we were just talking about this in the car yesterday how that relationship is different than with her other kids because she grew up with me the second time around. Oh, that's so interesting. So it was almost like a peer relationship at that point. It was we covered for each other. <laughs> 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 oh, interesting. Uh, any more comments about what it was like to be a preteen or a teen or questions? Great conversation so far. Let's keep it going. Um, let me get to my full screen, back to full screen. So that is, that's our stroll through the year's activity. Um, any, any final parting words from anyone? I think it's, I find it interesting every time I do this with groups because things come up that I totally identify with that maybe I hadn't remembered, but I was like, yeah, that's what fifth grade was like for me. And that's what, yeah, I remember that in eighth grade or whatever. So um, I appreciate you all sharing um, pieces of your former selves. All right, on to ages and stages. And this is, uh, oh, um, Amy says, I'm glad we can stroll back through memories, but don't have to do it all over again. I heard you. I completely agree. It's 
it's good to remember and it's good to be where I am now for sure. <laughs> Thanks for that comment. So um, yeah, so let's move on to ages and stages. And this is the handout that you have that's fairly colorful and uh, pretty wordy. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like and um, you should have access to it so that you're able to look at it on your own. I think we can put it directly in chat. It's also in the folder that Mary Beth posted earlier today. So um, just to give you a brief orientation to the handout, there are the three uh, age groups, um, 8 to 10, 11 to 13, uh, let me, <laughs> 11 to 13, and then 14 to 18. Okay, sorry about that. I drew a blank there for a second. So in each one has a section on um, physical development and abilities, cognitive development, language development, and social and emotional development. So I, I know there's a lot on this handout. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little time to review it and, and kind of go through it and think about it. However, do go ahead and concentrate on one age group. Um, and then actually on the second page, we, we won't do a whole lot with this today, but you certainly might want to read it over for your age group, the brief tips for educators. So um, so each, each age group has two pages devoted to it. Um, maybe pick an age group that you know feel like you know less about or feel like you work with the most often however you want to choose it'll be fine um, we'll just end up going through all of these briefly together and you will continue to have the handout to go through in more detail um, on your own later so um, what we're going to do i'm going to go back um this is what we're going to do is give you a few minutes to look over the ages and stages hand handout and then um, we will also do the ages and stages padlet and the handout is now linked in the chat i see thank you christy and mary beth um, so then we'll have you write some notes on the ages and stages padlet and review others notes and what we'll be doing is um, writing six word memoirs to kind of synthesize that learning. And if you want to put your six word memoir in chat, that would be awesome. We'll talk a lot more about what a six word memoir is. For now, let's go ahead and have you look at the handout and I'll go ahead and pull up the Padlet so that as you're ready and we'll we'll take, let me look at the time, 10.33. Um, we'll take like 10 minutes or so, depending on how it looks with the Padlet, to look over the handout and start to work on the Padlet. And then once we're in the Padlet, I'll make an announcement about how much longer we'll do. And then we'll take a few minutes to write six word memoirs. But in between those step two and three, we will take a break and come back together and talk about what a six word memoir is and, and look at a few of those to give you some inspiration. So with that being said, I will be quiet and you can go to the um, ages and stages handout, review the age group that you want to, um, start to think about maybe some words that stand out to you or some concepts that stand out to you, and then um, make notes on the Padlet and look at others' notes. So I'm headed over to the Padlet and I will see you there.
Hey, everybody. Um, keep the comments coming. It's looking good. If you um, have already made a couple comments and are kind of looking over your handout thinking, what else can I comment on? Maybe take a look at what some of your colleagues have written in your age group and see if you have anything to add to what they've said. Thanks. I would also welcome any comments about uh, under the tips for educators section as far as just kind of if you think of a tip that stands out to you think about which of these four categories it falls under and stick it in there and if it's you know it doesn't have to be perfect or anything but if there's something that sparks your um, thinking about your age group feel free from that section feel free to include that as well. It looks to me like things are slowing down quite a bit on our Padlet. So what I would like to do, um, if you are typing, continue to do so and continue to um, make your comments for sure. Um, what I would like to do is give you a minute or two to just go through um, your age group and take a look at, um, uh, in all four of the categories, what other folks have put. And then I think we have time, I'll do a sort of a brief debrief of each age group, and then we'll go back to my slide to um, talk about those six word memoirs and what they are and how we're going to process this whole thing together. So just, just take a minute or two to look over your age group and uh, feel free to make additional comments if you would like.
Okay, how are we feeling? I, I feel like we're maybe ready to move on. Um, I'll do just like I said, a very brief debrief and then we'll go over to the six word memoirs again. So um, any objections? Okay, I'll move on. So eight to 10 physical, um, there were it's concerns with being an early bloomer or a late bloomer. Um, there's a lot of comparison among peers there, like, you know, where do I fit in? Um, and um, someone mentioned that he or she had an older pregnant sister that who was 15, that this person knew stuff about sex and babies and others wanted to know that stuff. Yeah, at that age, I'm sure. Um, some people uh, for eight to 10 cognitive talked about how school came easy, except for some for some people it didn't and um, that a love for reading and books emerged here and someone mentioned having a fifth grade teacher who was amazing at read aloud. And he was an influence to be a librarian, which is really cool. Uh, eight to 10 language, a um, couple people mentioned sarcasm, I think, or at least one person and uh, that it may or may not have led to being in trouble. Yeah, a <laughs> um, couple people mentioned journalism or writing. Um, somebody says very reserved and would only speak when spoken to. And then social emotional, um, had a hard time expressing com complex emotions or thoughts for sure, yeah. Um, and then people with life changes, um, some very big too. So lots to deal with there as a young person. Moving quickly on to 11 to 13s. Um, physical, um, again, sort of still the going through puberty, um, early, late blooming, um, those kinds of concerns or happenings, goings on in people's lives. Um, for 11 to 13 cognitive, very strong sense of right and wrong. I think that's very typical of that age group. Um, and then, uh, Oh, this is neat. Somebody says nieces and nephews, as well as babysitting, started realizing how my one true dream was to be a mom and help others. Cool. Um, 11 to 13 language, started testing the boundaries of what I could get away with saying to adults. Mm -hmm. Some people became very quiet. Some people became not. <laughs> um, sarcasm's mentioned again in this age group. And then social emotional, um, somebody says, I began to keep secret from my parents that were very important in the time, but looking back, I could have shared with them. Yeah, I think this, you know, as I mentioned earlier, and I know the handout mentions, this is where people, eight to 10 also, but even more so maybe 11 to 13, start to pivot towards their peer groups and really be um, more into what's going on with them. Somebody else mentions keeping secrets, testing boundaries, um, and up another secret, at least one more secret. And so let's move on to 14 to 18 physical, um, teenage hormones, watching my friends develop, it was old news for me. So we had an early bloomer um, whose friends finally got around to developing. Um, somebody became very self-conscious about body at this age, um, started working out twice a day and developed a mild eating disorder. I think that's unfortunately a common experience for many people in this age group or a few, you know, several people in this age group. Uh, cognitive, um, dreaming about what college is like, going to college, reading lots of books about college, um, looking to the future while sabotaging the pre present, somebody said, um, and then um, so a lot of people looking forward to that next stage of life, um, and what schooling, but somebody else mentioned that school became a little harder and the desire to apply myself or please my teachers became less, um, language, let's see, mouthy sarcasm comes up several times again, um, <laughs> would say almost, say most anything to upset my mother. Um, learned that words could be used as weapons. Yeah, that's powerful. And then 14 to 18, social emotional, um, loved working and earning money, independence, um, loyal to my group of friends. I was the Ann Landers of my high school, social and work focused. Um, so, um, I'm still close to my high school group of friends. Yeah. So that's just a debrief of um, kind of the very brief of the ages and stages uh, process that you've gone through with the Padlet here. So I'm going to go back to our instructions. So we've done step one and step two. 
And um, step three is if you feel inspired to write a six word memoir and put it in the chat and be sure to include your age range. So the eight to 10, 11 to 13 or 14 to 18. And um, let's talk about what a six word memoir is a little bit. So um, as I mentioned, you'll choose one of those stages and then six word memoirs um, come from Smith Magazine. It's, they're definitely been around a while, but I wanted to make sure we covered a little bit about what they are in case you're not familiar. Uh, the tagline from Smith Magazine, which you can go to that link later, we're not going to go today, but it's called, one, their tagline is one life, six words, what's yours? So I have some examples from teens, uh, and we'll look at those before you go on to write yours. The challenge today is to write one that describes aspects of teen and preteen development. And so here are some examples. Um, most of these are anonymous. This one right here, my diary is read by everyone, is from a teen named Taylor Swift. So you can tell that this is a little bit of an older slide. <laughs> these um, have been around a while. The rest are from just regular, every, average, everyday teens. I'm going to give you a moment to look at those. Um, So as you can see, these are pretty, uh, you know, specific to these specific teens. So if you want to imagine a teen and write something specific, you can do that. But my th thinking was that you would take some of those attributes that we've been exploring and create a six word memoir that fits the age group that you decided to focus on today. So um, I was just going to point out like a couple of these are pretty uh, interesting. Mom just revoked my creative license from Nura A. Um, I think that's something that a lot of teens could identify with. Like I'm, you know, I'm being hemmed in here by mom or dad or grandma or whoever it is. Um, and then this one too, Googled what he called me, ouch. I think that speaks to part of what we were talking about with like clicks and the sense of belonging and not belonging, those kinds of things. So um, I also like this one with Brit from Brittany L, living my dream, please send money. Um, I think that's, you know, if, if like, I don't know how old these teens were when they wrote them, but I, I could see that being like the 11 to 13 age range, or maybe even the 14 to 18. But, you know, as we, as some of you pointed out on the 14 to 18, they're starting to get more independence and actually make some money of their own sometimes. So anyway, um, I will leave these up while you write your six word memoirs and put them in the chat. And just, as I mentioned, um, please include the age range that you're including. And I will, I'll type those in the chat so you have them. So, um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna be quiet for a few minutes and let you compose your memoirs. And by the way, this, these are not going to be published anywhere other than this chat box, so don't feel like they have to be perfect. We're just trying to capture the essence of part of what it was like to be one of those age groups and, and what the developmental stages are people are going through. And I'm just going to let them roll into chat for a little while, and then we'll go back and talk about a few. And um, if you have any comments as I'm reading yours, please feel free to unmute yourself or continue to chat and we will talk about it.
I have an anonymous one in the chat um, for, oh, never mind. And I guess I should say, if you have more than one, feel free to go ahead and, and put more than one in there. I have an anonymous one in the chat. Um, can't wait to make friends elsewhere. <laughs> that's, that's good. That really captures an age for sure. Seems like we're slowing down quite a bit on the memoir. So let's go back and take a look at them. If you are still have one to contribute, feel free to keep typing and we'll get to it as we scroll back down. But um, let's see, a lot of, lot of great ones. Thank you all for participating. Um, so 11 to 13, my passion, gaming, let me be. Mm -hmm. 14 to 18, truthfully, I can't wait to leave. I could identify with that one in that age range, especially closer to 18. Um, 11 to 13 year old, black sheep was straight A, the black sheep was straight A's. Um, I like this one, um, 14 and up, always looked better on the model. That feels true to me in my experience. Um, 11 to 13, wished I knew the future. Mm -hmm. Eight to 10, quiet mouths proceed carefully, fragile emotions. 11 to 13, join the Navy, see the world. Um, 14 to 18, friends, boys, school, needed nothing more. Yeah. Um, 11 to 13, life is a game, play it. Uh, 11 to 13, you're not the boss of me. Mm -hmm. I think that exact phrase has been uttered by many, many kids or teens in that age range, pre-teens and teens. Um, 11 to th 13, happy I moved to a small town. 14 to 18, I do what I want. Eight to 10, awkward body, tired of standing out. 
11, I'm sorry, 8 to 10, I am smart, let me read. Um, 14 to 18, social butterfly who hides it well. Oh, that's interesting. And then um, 8 to 10, boobs, what is everyone always staring? And then that got several words of agreement. Um, and then there's one uh, without the age, but anyway, um, living the dream, not sure whose, might fit in a few of the ages. Um, 11 to 13, the opposite sex, life's biggest mystery. Yes. <laughs> 11 to 13, gone until the streetlights come on. That kind of captures a experience for sure. And then, um, so, oh, okay, Ramey, thanks for answering my question. Ramey, I had just a little comments going on there in the chat that you feel free to look at, um, but I'm not going to cover in this. Um, okay, so that sums up our ages and stages activities. Thank you all for doing those um, those memoirs. Those are great. I, I really uh, thank you for taking time to write with me. I, it's always interesting to see what people do. And I, um, in case you don't know, um, you can save the chat. If you look in the chat box where it says to everyone type message here, over to the right, there's the three little dots. If you want to save these for yourself, just click on those dots and then there's a chance to save chat. It will only save up to what you've done right, what we've done right now. So you may want to, if, if you want the whole chat, you may want to try to do that towards the end of the, the meeting, but you can save the, at least this far with the, um, with the, the memoirs that we've written to, um, to capture those, so you have those for later if you would like. All right, so that is, um, those are the main parts of the content we were gonna cover, but now we're gonna work together on an exercise called Building Your Toolbox. And there, um, we will go to a work group that will have all of this information. So basically I want you to think about what you know about tweens and teens and what we've talked about today. And we're gonna to work together on a shared document to um, fill out and actually ignore the age group. We're just gonna do it generally with all of the ages we've, we've talked about today. So just for teens and tweens together. Um, so we're gonna to go to that work group together and fill it out. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And then also um, if one of our hosts, oh, actually uh, Mary Beth has already put the handout in. So if you want a print friendly version, you'll have that. And then um, also the work group, if um, that is just, it's gonna be a Google document that we're gonna share. So once you have a chance to go over to that, you can just click in and type, um, what you what you would like, any notes you want to make from today and take a look. The toolbox work group is now in the chat as well. So you can click over here and join me over here. And um, we can just make this anonymous. However, if you're making a note that you want to take a look at and or, or want to know that that's your note from today, you could put your initials like in in um, parentheses if you would like, but certainly not necessary if you want to just make some notes. So we'll do this for a few minutes and then um, we'll talk action planning and then um, we'll do evaluation and we will be good for this morning. I know I'm going to see a lot of you this afternoon too.
So several people are still typing on our shared document um, and uh, we probably need to move on a little bit, but please continue to share. Um, there was a question that came across in chat. Can you address how to deal with teasing or bullying in a group situation? Needs to be stopped, but not at the cost of harming the victim or the one doing the harm. Um, actually, that question probably, um, I mean, definitely we can try to address it right now. Um, that's something we could talk about this afternoon as well with facilitating groups. Um, as you saw today, part of what I did was have our group agreements for respect being one of them. So if it's a, you know, if it's ongoing group and especially with young people, if you've had them like today, I proposed the agreements because we're really short on time, but if, if you have an ongoing group that's going to meet regularly, it's a great idea to, to sit down with them at the beginning and be like, okay, how are we going to treat each other? And of course, you know, depending how young the group is, you can kind of guide them. But pointing back to that and saying, we all agreed to this. Um, but if, and that may not be the situation you're talking about, but that is helpful for ongoing groups to be like, hey, we're not, we're not following this. We need to come back and go back to the agreements and, and make sure what we can do. Um, I think also, you know, it's the whole thing like you would do with volunteers or staff members, like praise in public, you know, correct or adjust in private. So, um, you know, if immediate safety is a concern for the one being bullied, obviously you have to step in right then. Um, but sometimes just going up to that that teen or preteen and just who is being bullied and just talking to them and maybe getting them out of the situation a little bit, letting them know that you're a safe person and that your library, I'm assuming is where we're talking about mostly is a safe space. Um, and then, you know, if, if it was bullying by just a single person, once you've got the, you know, the person who's being um, attacked or bullied, teased, you know, or bullied, um, feeling safe and maybe, you know, have, have moved on for the day, ready to go home, whatever. Um, maybe then talking to that person who is doing the bullying outside of the group, because, you know, generally it's not just a one-on-one -on -one situation, um, being able to take them aside and talk about, you know, well, the library has to be a comfortable place for everybody. And, you know, um, that's kind of my take on it. Would anyone else like to um, step in and, and give any suggestions? It's a hard situation. I'll, I'm, you know, that's for sure. Okay, we have a comment in the chat. Um, a good group lesson on bullying, depending on age, is the crumpled paper example. How bullying with words, et cetera, can take a toll, crumple the paper, paper, and even if you say it's sorry, it doesn't take the hurt away that you've caused. Uncrumple the paper and try to flatten, then talk about respecting each other and differences. I've done this before in different settings with different kid ages and it's gone over well. Thank you for that. That's a very visual, concrete example. Thanks. Any other comments or questions on that? Well, this uh, that's a topic that could certainly be its own <laughs> two hour training or hour and a half training. So I hope we've begun to address it just slightly. And um, if you have any other uh, thoughts to share, please do so. And um, somebody else commented directly to me that um, she recently had a group of students come to me about adult bullying. Oh, that's, that's sad. Um, that's, that's even tougher, I think, you know, like um, bullying is not easy to deal with, even if it's peer to peer. And that's, that's just really disappointing to hear. I mean, we talked earlier about caring adults and to have the opposite of that is just, just terrible for, for people's development, young people's development. I think sometimes to help with bullying, and maybe especially if it's an adult bullying a child or a teen is to be a safe place or a safe person for the person that's getting bullied and just be like, I'm here, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And sometimes you can't always be that person, but they know that you at least they have somebody in their pocket. And so I think that's something. Yeah, and um, you know, de depending on the specifics of the situation, there may not be a whole lot you can do about it other than to be that person. But they know that they are being seen, you know, and be that that what is going on is there are other witnesses. It's not just them alone. So yeah, thanks for that, Mary Beth. Um, so that was um, our work for building the toolbox. And as I mentioned, you will get um, a copy of that, so you will have that for future use. Um, we're going to go through action planning really quickly because we're running a little bit tight on time. 
Um, the action plan handout, Christy has put the link in the chat. So if you want one of these for um, uh, to use on your own, you can you can print one out. Um, all of the information you need is here. So I'm just going to give you a couple minutes to work on your own, and we won't we won't check back with these. So this is just for you for now. I encourage you if there are other people in your library that you're working with on these to maybe work together um, and to compare these later or to share them with other staff members or volunteers um, or board members, whoever you might have working with you on working on your programming for tweens and teens. But basically just a couple minutes to think about what ideas and strategies you'll take from today and um, think about maybe the steps and what you can do this week, this month, and this coming year to start to implement some of those. So as I mentioned, we kind of are cutting this a little bit short because we're a little tight on time, but I'll give you just a mi couple minutes to think about it and to jot down some ideas. All right, as I mentioned, we were just going to take a couple minutes for that. Um, I wanted to point out Mary Beth had a comment in the chat. Um, it's about meeting tweens and teens where they are, letting them be who they are, but keeping structure. There's acceptable teen noise and activity in a library, and it's different than the children's or adult areas. Completely agreed. Um, so that comes to the end of our real, um, our main part of today we do um we will come back later for questions and discussion we had great questions and discussions throughout so unless there's something really burning right now um we will just delay that and we'll go on to the evaluation um my email address is now in the chat thank you christy and also on the screen feel free i love talking about teen services so please let me know um, if you want to talk further about anything that we've talked about today or anything teen services. So we're going to move on to our evaluation. The link is now in the chat. Once you've completed your evaluation, you are free to go. Thank you so much for your participation. 
Um, most of the CKLS staff, I think, or at least some of the CKLS staff and I will hang around for a little bit longer. If you did have other questions or points of discussion you wanted to have, please come back. Um, but otherwise, uh, go ahead and go to that link for the evaluation. And I'm leaving the outcomes up here on my screen so that you will have those for that portion of the evaluation. It only takes a few minutes to do. So you, let's see, we are at 1125. You should be golden to be able to get that done by our 1130 deadline. So so, but as I mentioned, please come back and, and chat with us if you have questions and are inclined to do so. Thanks so much for everything today. This was a great conversation, great group. Thank you, Anna. I really appreciate your time today. Um, I think this, I know it's originally was planned as an in-person, but I'm glad that we were able to make it into an online version so we could, um, so we could talk about teens and tweens and, and ages and stages. So. Yeah. Um, I appreciate your time today. I am going to go ahead and stop recording, um, but we'll still be around for questions and comments and anything like that. So I'm going to head and stop recording.